All right, well, good late afternoon, Tuesday, February um, 9th, uh, 2021, year of our Lord. This is Justin William Savoy, and um, yeah, whew, I'm feeling a little tired. It's like nap time. Uh, I'm like an early riser, so this time of the day, get a little bit lethargic, huh? and uh go on a long walk and kind of mull over some of the stuff I've been reading or take a trip on down to the natural grocers and try to get some healthy food to eat or something of that nature. Um, but I wanted to make a quick video. It's been a bit, I, I don't know, for the last couple of days I didn't really have much to discuss on my mind. Yeah, but I guess, well... <clears throat> I've shown you guys some books on some of the research that I'm doing, and I also let you know I'm going to do some more studies on Reformation stuff, and, well, what I got going on over here, I took a little trip down to the smoke shop to pick up a little special blend, uh, it's like a raspberry one, pretty delicious, and pick this up, keeping with the themes, you guys already know I got this National Geographic here, and I'll be taking a look at this, this looks pretty good, so I'll probably go through it with you guys a bit, not too much, because probably get, someone will get mad at me, you know, that, <laughs> it, it marks a significant landmark, I guess, I didn't watch the Super Bowl this year, go Raiders, uh, uh, I just can't even help but say that, just because... Anyways, moving along with all that, some of you might unsubscribe, no, I'm just kidding, but, uh, I'm not, like, a huge sports fan, to be honest, I'm, like, a bookworm, I, I like, just, like, huh, well, um, being born in Hayward, California, and then, like, the Oakland Raiders when I was a kid were, like, really cool, and then living with my dad in Southern California, I can't really say as much of a Rams fan, even though I did go to some Rams games, much more of a Raiders type of dude. Just um, all the image and bravado that came with that. I just loved that when I was like in junior high and high school, especially. Just good memories, collecting football cards. I did collect baseball cards to a bit. I don't know, any of that kind of stuff. Introvert activity. So, hey guys, welcome. Uh, so, what I want to look at is I've been looking at a lot of, I guess, Orthodox stuff. Um, a lot of Roman Catholic stuff, and I figured I would take a look at some, um, reformed stuff from my library, just kind of leak it on out. Many of you know that at one time I had a pretty substantial library, um, just totally trusting in God to help me to rebuild that. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd bring out some stuff from the collection of what, um, I have and what I'm thankful to... I haven't even read yet uh, these books, and then I got this other one on Calvin as well. I don't think the books that remain from my tragic event that led up to uh, my um, losing a big portion of my library, I don't think I have any of Calvin's actual... No, I do not have any of Calvin's actual commentaries or... I had a great copy of the Institutes I've been holding out. There's been several different times, like in the last like two years. I'm just going to find a deal on a good standard version that I prefer, like a two-volume set, and go from there um, in good condition or new condition. Before in the past, I haven't really minded too much unless someone's just really marked up a book. Sometimes marginalia is interesting if it's from someone who's got some... Uh, brain cells rubbing around up in the noggin, but um, I prefer to, just, I, I do annotate um, some books, I have this here that, this is what I've done before in the past, I don't really write my Bibles um, anymore, I did in the beginning, way, way, way back in the day, um, I've had this Cambridge here for a long, long time, um, it's quite nice, my preferred calfskin and crazy ex used to ride in that not my um, children's mother but the person that I made the whole series of narcissist videos about and um, 
So, but normally I wouldn't do that. It's just not my gig. Um, but I do like to journal and write notes, a significant amount of copious notes actually, but they just are like only something I can follow along with. And I'm constantly writing down what I'm learning, watching lectures on YouTube. I've just always been like disciplined about that since I would say like, I don't know, like pretty early 20s. Um, and, you know, when I was in Bible school and um, studying school of ministry, I did fill up volumes and volumes of notebooks. And unfortunately, those are no longer with me, nor any of my copious notes from university. I don't even think I have stuff from post-baccalaureate or nursing, medical-related, anatomy and physiology stuff. I had a lot of good med medical texts, which is another thing that I love, which I do enjoy reading those. Um, it's just a certain type of personality, I guess, especially stuff about osteopathic medicine. That was kind of like a chosen path that I um, really enjoyed, and I would have liked to go to an osteopathic school, but be that as it may, uh, let's look at this. Um, so is it Herman J. Selderus? Selderus? There's lectures with him online. I'm not overly familiar with him. I know he's from the Netherlands. I've just been steeped in reading and patristics, you know, um, mostly. But I think I've told you guys a story. I got into reading like Chrysostom, or if you want to say Chrysostom, um, through reading the Institutes of uh, John Calvin and references, and then it just leads on to other things, and then of course wanting to, I started first, you know, with like Roman Catholic, like scholastics, or like the writings of St. Bernard of Clairvaux, um, and, um, um, uh, you know, like Elmslum, of course, Augustine, just right out the gate, but I'm talking about when I was um, pretty young, but then once I discovered the Christian East and all of the Greek Cappadocian fathers and um, father and mother uh, of the desert, primarily the desert fathers. That's when I um, just got interested in that and liturgical studies and goes on and on and on. But uh, yeah, so let's see what this says. And I'm not going to take an in-depth look. This is just kind of showing you. I've been kind of showcasing the books that I'm thinking about uh, reviewing um, but not really um, deep diving. Um, and then I got another, I'll show you. I showed you all the stuff I had got from Tan Books and the uh, Roman Catholic stuff and the stuff on Trent and the one on the Reformation. And then, uh, you know, I'm doing some studies on the Caroline Divines and I figure, you know, I got some hard bound volumes around here. I don't know. Over here are some Harvard classics. I think this is like uh, Pascal. Um, you know, I, I had a lot in the uh, um, back of the day. I, I once, you know, had a decent-sized little house with a shop and whatnot um, when I was working in mental health. Um, and I worked, like, long, long hours. But when I worked overnight, I did get some time, downtime to read as, like, patients or clients were sleeping which was quite nice. Um, I tried to move away from that. It's unhealthy for me. I never quite slept right during the daytime. I'm really just a scheduled um, person who goes by their circ circadian rhythms. Um, so I'm kind of uh, going on and on, doing some drinking of uh, Bengal spice tea here. I do like a lot of this... Um, burning of Nak Champa. I, I, you know, if I had the cash flow, I'd buy some more expensive incense from like some Orthodox um, church supply stores just because I love the smell of those. But I like my place to be saturated with those smells. Um, you know, I'm just kind of, I, I like that kind of stuff, you know. But here's what I got going on for my study. So you guys saw the books on Trent and Philip Neary, and then um, this I can't wait to dive into. It's got the English and uh, Latin, um, the Dertinger. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I used to have tons of reference and word studies and stuff, but hey, I, I really can't complain, and I'm so grateful. Like God has like really blessed my life, you guys, and so I'm thankful for that. I have healthy children, and 
Um, you know, I enjoy time of solitude. My kiddos will be here with me um, tomorrow evening on through the weekend. And uh, so, yeah, I already showed you guys this. Um, um, this uh, John, John, Sir John Tavernier, Cockatiss of Thanksgiving. And these are just some, I'm trying to repair a couple of these. You can see that one spot, that's like a tragedy there. I'm not really familiar with how to really fix those. I know how you can do it with like a paper, like the kind of paper that's that, I forget that little bit of a heavy grid. But yeah, that's a shame. But you know, I don't really care because I just have them in the, the hermitage and that's that. If you kind of go over here, it's just a really nice basic um, chess set that I got for a, a gift um, for Christmas. And then, um, I'll show this picture. Uh, let's see here. So this is uh, when I was um, an evangelical Christian. Um, and um, I don't identify that way at all anymore. But uh, can you guys see me? It's pretty funny. There's me. I'm not bald. I actually have like blonde, blonde hair. It's like bleached out or something, surfer boy, I don't know what was up with that, but anyways, yeah, and so there's uh, Dutch John Corson, you might know who he is, he came out of the Jesus movement, and uh, next to him is Jim Wright, he's a local pastor in the area, and here's all the homies um, from the school of ministry, so yeah, um, and that was a good period, and that is where the journey began with Calvinist uh, literature and um, studying the Institutes and reading the Fathers, the Latin Fathers mostly, um, and going through the Schaeff, the Philip Schaeff or Schaff um, volumes. Um, so you want to look with me at this a little bit. Uh, let's see what this says here. Uh, 500 years after the birth of John Calvin, the reformer of Geneva continues to loom large as one of the most formative figures in Christian history and one of the most difficult to show up close and personal. Herman Selderis presents here a fresh new biography based on a careful reading of Calvin's letters and other sources. Calvin emerges as uh, neither a hero or villain, but rather as a flawed and forgiven pilgrim who never lost sight of his final destination and inspired many others along the way. A wonderful introduction to a great teacher of the church, Timothy George Dean of Beeson Divinity School, Samford University, and general editor, Reformation Commentary on Scripture, this is simply one of the best biographies of Calvin I have seen. Sederis has managed, if I'm mispronouncing his last name, I do apologize, and um, I'll figure it out. I'll get on Google and listen to it, tell me, soldier, sir, or whatever. Um, so, has managed uh, admirably to combine keen academic insight with a clear, engaging writing style and many delicious details for all who are curious about Calvin, his, uh, so, um, let's see, this is the book, is the place to begin. Frank A. James, Third Reformed Theological Seminary, a delightful new biography of Calvin by one of Europe's leading Reformation scholars. Celeris does not simply rehash the events of Calvin's life. He weaves those events into a story of a man on a geographical, theological, and spiritual pilgrimage, or more precisely, a story of a man on a pilgrimage. Lyle D. Birma, Calvin Theological Seminary. One would think that this, of all biographies of John Calvin through the centuries, there would be nothing new to say. Think again. Veteran Calvin scholar Herman Seldris has followed Calvin himself and going back to the sources and provides a portrait of Calvin drawn exclusively from Calvin's own writings. The result is a fresh and invigorating look at the human person behind all the caricatures, the faithful servant of Christ who saw his life as being lived in the providence of God, a God whose ways he did not understand. Find here fully human Calvin, whose commitment to the pilgrim life instructs and inspires us still today. Donald K. McKim, editor of Cambridge Companion to John Calvin. 
Herman J. Selder, who is professor of church history and church polity at the Univer Theological University of Appledorn, Netherlands, and director of the university's Institute for Reformation Research. He is a leading Reformation historian and author of several books, including Calvin's Theology of the Psalms. Yeah, and then here we got the... Uh, uh, the Derek W. Thomas and John W. Tweedell for a new Reformation. John Calvin, afterward by R.C. Sproul. It's a nice looking dust jacket. I, I don't know. I like that. It's Crossway. So, Herman Selderus, he's commenting here, President Theological University Avaldorn, complete, accessible, scholarly, and highly relevant. By introducing Calvin's theology, this book provides the church with a biblical and theological foundation that will not be shaken. Read this book, and then run to read Calvin himself. Matthew Barrett, Associate Professor of Christian Theology, Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, uh, Executive Editor, Credo Magazine, Editor of Reformation Theology, the contributors not only highlight but also understand the profound contemporary relevance of Calvin's theological and pastoral emphasis. Sinclair B. Ferguson, Chancellor, Professor of Systematic Theology, Reformed Theological Seminary, Teaching Fellow, Ligonier Ministries. For all of those of us who long for a new Reformation in the global church, this is the book that we can return to again and again. Sean Michael Lucas, Senior Pastor, Independent Presbyterian Church of Memphis, Tennessee. Calvin emerges as a careful scholar, complicated friend, severe pastor, and brilliant theologian as he was. Chad Van Dixenhorn, Professor of Church History, Westminster Theological Seminary. A comprehensive and engraving survey into Calvin's life, theology, and pastoral practice, and deserves to be read and savored. Scott M. Menest. Uh, professor of Church History and the History of Christian Thought, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, don't want to <laughs> start a fire. No, just kidding. Uh, so, yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, that's those. And I'm going to dive into that stuff. Oh, and I got this. This is like a railroad spike. Bam. I don't know, like a paperweight, though. That's what I use it for. Uh, anyways, yeah, so uh, I hope you guys like this uh, little look at these two John Calvin uh, biographical works and enjoyed me kind of just checking in and letting you know um, what's up. And, uh, yeah, the Wall Street Journal, what was it going to say about that? Yeah, you know, the Saturday edition at least pick up, right? Because that's for the literary reviews. So... Um, I could do without taking the paper too often. Um, I used to take the local paper from time to time. I might get back into that. It gives me like that feel of like you're kind of sinking your roots in or, you know, this is like your home. I, I don't know how to explain it. And you do read through it. Sometimes the local news, though, is just nothing but like a lot of kind of bad, disheartening news, really. But I like to get Wall Street Journal. You can read sections on literature, um, you know, periodicals are good too. Things like Harper's, uh, what else? Like Smithsonian, uh, what else is there? Uh, New York, um, The New Yorker, things like that are enjoyable um, to read from time to time. I do like some of that kind of newsstand type of stuff. And if I go to the uh, tobacco shop to pick up some pipe tobacco, um, which I, I do um, smoke a tobacco pipe from time to time. Um, I've had one forever, and I peer, like university, I used to grade papers when I was like a teacher's aide and um, taught um, some comparative religion classes while um, the professor was probably seeking other jobs at more, <laughs> um, at more not prestigious, what's the word I'm looking for, just looking for uh, an upgrade in the career. And so she took me on as a, um, you know, the first time I student taught as, as, as an undergraduate. But, um, yeah, like a lot of my professors and people, I'm not trying to boast or anything. I just uh, like a total bookworm and read piles and piles and piles of work. So a lot of the stuff that I was um, learning, especially in literature, I had already read. And I kind of just came into the classes ready to rock. I was a non-traditional student because I was a little bit older in graduate school, only in my uh, 20s still. But... There was not a lot of funding available to me for schooling until I was like around like 25 years of age where I really just 
took off. Prior to that, you know, when I was in high school, I had done um, some junior college studies already and uh, on and off with that um, pay-as-you-go type of thing. Oh, yeah, what was I looking at? Uh, oh, yeah, um, I don't want to forget George Herbert, Music at Midnight. Uh, Kramer, A Defense of the Doctrine of the Sacred Sacrament. And then uh, there's this Perkins book here. I love the aesthetic of this book. Now, this series here, they have some other stuff that I wouldn't be interested in reading, but they did a great job on this cover and layout, so I don't know if the person who did this would ever, you know, see this review, but hey, thumbs up. Oh, and there's the Joel Beakey plug there. That guy's like all over the place. If it's Puritan and stuff, he's all up in it. So uh, that's that with him. But yeah, this is cool. I love the look of the. It's just well laid out. I, I don't know. For a paperback, there should be more stuff made like that. I know I'm getting kind of in the realm of like being a little bit uh, obsessive. But, you know, there's a way to do it. And it's pretty cost effective these days. And I'm going to be publishing some stuff. So stay tuned. <clears throat> you should buy some books from me and be a Patreon. Uh, Patreon if I put up. Those three books that I'm working on now, would you, anyone want to read them? I don't know. A lot of the stuff I'm interested in, they're not, but that's fine. Um, I can just go down uh, as just being a, a little bit of a, I guess people would say, an elitist. But, you know, also to try to have a, a humble heart. It's just a passion that God's given to me. Um, for someone else, it's like working on automobiles or just being a good, handy repair and fixer of things and, or woodworking or um, other things um, but uh, for me it's with the books and with the writing and I want to be able to publish some stuff soon. I'm trying to think of some more contemporary topics that I'd like to tackle um, maybe in traditionalism or something like that and maybe that would reach a broader audience which would be nice it's a phase in life like 45 years old it's time to do some of that and um, you know it's just like a whole new life I'm living and if any of you just jumped over here perchance because you were watching some of my videos on narcissistic abuse and what that's like to go through and to recover from, just feeling good and um, healthy and recovering from that and uh, happy and healthy and um, trying to be fit and mentally, spiritually, bodily, all those good things and taking care of myself. So, hey, I hope you like this. This is Justin Williams Savoy. As always, you can reach me at... Um, Savoy Justin123, it's S U V O Y J U S T I N123 at gmail.com. Um, I do have a Patreon up. I don't know if I have any patrons or not yet. I haven't really looked, but if you want to find out um, about supporting the channel, even just drop something in the comment. Hey, would you guys like like or 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 thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever? Um, do something with your thumb uh, because. Um, that will help the algorithm, and then I'll look, I don't, I think I have like 98, like one of my subscribers dropped off, so whatevs about that, but, uh, um, you know, um, I will be making some more videos with me on them soon, I guess, and I should do some stuff and some teach. oh yeah, and break down some stuff on the Play-Doh thing, I need to finish some stuff I started, I was getting disappointed with stuff I was doing on webcams because, I don't know what's up. Like, well, my laptop's like 10 years old. It's like running a distribution of um, GNU slash Linux. I don't want to go into what distribution that is necessarily. Um, but and then I got like an old computer that was going to go in the dumps. Like someone's grandma was going to throw it away. And I just took that thing and I put uh, a really solid, just built up from uh, pretty minimal install um, to what I wanted to do. And it works great. But for some reason, the laptop wasn't doing so great. The webcam, I need to get another webcam and see if my uh, Arch Linux box will uh, run that. And if it won't, then um, I don't know. I'll do something. I don't know what, but try to get a good quality camera and it will stay still so it's none of this stuff. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm hoping that this video series will draw a certain uh, niche of people who like and enjoy this sort of stuff. And... Um, then we'll just, uh, go from there, you guys. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, let's enjoy ourselves 2020. Life of a shut-in. Semi, I would say more than semi. Deep recluse. 
No. Um, and uh, uh, just uh, my scholarly endeavors for now, I probably will, I don't know, do something until the sun goes down and then I'll put on my beanie and run around the block or do some cartwheels or I don't know and then uh, call it good, come in and retire um, for the evening and start over in the morning should the Lord will, um, um, if God willing, and uh, yeah, I'll make another video and we'll go from there, you guys. Uh, I do want to show you this, if you can see it, there's kind of a reflection, I don't know if you can see me in the picture, but I think it's beautiful, so you get to see more of my house than I'm even comfortable with, but that's cool, you know, I don't really care. Oh yeah, it's called Light of the World, and it's a Christ child with a Nimbus or the Halo. Um, you know, you, you like what you like, um, but also it looks like my, um, quite a bit like my youngest son Soren, but yeah, it's like, I am like drawn to the ones, the like, like Caravaggio, I did a whole thing on him, of like the saints and whatnot with the very dark backgrounds and minimal co color, like more like hues of brown and natural, real like organic looking stuff, I don't know, it's just me. All right, you guys, Justin Savoy signing off. Adios, muchachos.